Hello, my name is Zain Asad from Asad Z-Man Films, and today I'm going to be talking to you about sound. Now, what are the most important characteristics of cinematic sound? The fact that the majority of sounds that we hear in a movie, from the most re uh, realistic noises created on location, to the ones recreated in a controlled environment. Even something that is simple as an ambient sound that we hear in the background has been mixed, edited, and smoothly applied over a sequence of edited shots in order to create and enhance the illusion of continuity. The importance of sound, whether it may be music, dialogue, and even noises in film narrative was already paramount during the so-called silent period, where screenings were always accompanied by the live performance of a pianist, an organist, or a full orchestra. Sound artists would re recreate realistic noises behind the screens, a profession that would later take the name of Foley from Jack Foley, the artist at Universal who created noise tracks to be added to the films. Even live dialogue was already employed in silent cinema. In Japan, for example, actors specialized in third-person narration, also known as benshi. They would stand next to the screen, introduce the film, comment on the storyline, and lend their voices to the characters. The benshi accompanied screenings were so popular that the adoption of sound in cinema which was much slower in Japan than any other country. So now we will talk about the active off-screen space. The active off-screen space has often been employed in theaters, horror movies, and various crime genres. Now what is the external sound over? This is the type of sound that does not have a realistic source in the film because it originates from a place outside the story. It is a non-realistic sound that has been added to the scene. A classic example of this type of sound is the voice of an external narrator talking in third person. We understand that such omniscient figure is not exactly off screen because it is above the very same universe that it describes. So cinematic sound is always the manipulation that synchronizes and mixes various sounds recorded during shooting like noises, voices, music, together with post-production sounds. Music in particular, in order, to add, in order to add fluid sound continuity to a visual experience, which is essentially fragmented into a series of shots. Nowadays, most of the sounds in a movie are the result of a post-production work, to the point that we cannot really consider the final soundtrack as part of the shooting process. However, from a narrative point of view, there is a strict interaction between sound and shot, which can be very creative and the off-screen space becomes active. Even if the sound is technically always on, because we can always hear it, we can talk about sound in, we can talk about sound in and sound off according to the location of the sound source. We can use the term sound in for any sound, dialogue, noises, music, whose source is visible, the sound coming out of the lips of two characters that we see talking on screen, or a song coming from a CD player that is visible on screen. We can use the term sound off when the source of the sound, dialogue, noises, or music is not on screen, but is placed in a space nearby the image. For instance, when a character on screen is overhearing a conversation taking place in the next room, or when we see a close-up of the character who is listening to the radio. Let's talk about non-diegetic space. Non-diegetic space is much more rare, at least in traditional narrative cinema, because it would blatantly expose the storytelling process behind the story. Examples of non-diegetic space can be seen in some post-modern movies that include scenes that don't belong to the fictional universe of the story. So what is dietic shift? Dietic shift is the moment when we get so immersed into the film that we almost forget about our own existence. Our suspension of disbelief is fully active and we enter the fictional universe of the story and according to some psychologists even the consciousness of the main character. Our awareness of the surroundings and your consciousness is reduced to a minimum. In other terms, that is the moment where we are fully immersed in the diegetic world of the film. Diegetic shift derives from diexis, a concept primarily used in linguistics to indicate words or phrases that cannot be fully understood without additional contextual information. Jean-Luc Godard once said, all images that need to be framed are born equal and free. Movies are simply a story of their oppression. Yeah, that's just a little snippet of what sound is. There's like a whole bunch of other things and 
um, theories and processes of sound, and you could really, like, study sound for a lifetime, especially in film, I feel like, until you master it. I feel like there's no way you could master sound. It's all, like, learning and an experimenting process. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about sound. If you guys haven't already, you guys could check out my Patreon page. If you guys just donate $1 a month, uh, that would help me pay for like things for like my actors from them acting to actually like having food on set to actually like paying to actually paying for gear and other other things but um i hope you guys enjoyed this video um check out all my short films i have a playlist of them and yeah um i'll leave a link in the description for my playlist of short films i thank you guys so much for watching this and i hope you guys are staying safe out there and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.